Hi, from the broadcasting house here in Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, this is Power Talk, a show that comes to you so that we can be able to inspire you, motivate you, and push you to become the better version of yourself. Right here we discuss ma issues that matter when it comes to relationships and life issues. Today, we are uh, broadcasting also on our website, www.y254.co.ke So make sure that you head over to our website if at all you want to watch us online. We are broadcasting also online on our website. Our handles are on and they are up and running. I shall mention them in a few. Now today, our subject or of discussion is about love and trust in marriage. That's right. Love and trust in marriage. This is a very fundamental issue when it comes to marriage. Love and trust. These are the cornerstones of every marriage. Without trust, marriages break. Without love, marriages break. But now, according to statistics, in the recent past, for the, uh, in the, number, the number of divorces have increased significantly over the past five years right here in Kenya. Now, while at the end of 2020, that was last year, and the beginning of this year, 2021, the total number of registered divorces or those that are pending before court uh, is predicted to be more than 2,000. This is an alarming rate. Now, the question is, why? Why is it that we have a problem in the increased number of divorces in Kenya, what is the reason? What are the pillars that were broken? How can we build a love and trust in marriage? And actually, what, is the, what are the ingredients of a healthy marriage? Mm -hmm. This morning, these are the questions that we are trying to find out the answers to. I'm joined by Pastor Shadrach Mangera. He is a senior pastor at the Calvary Covenant Center in Kamulu. Karibu sana, Pastor. Thank you, sir. Um, I, 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 we are also expecting the presence of Pastor Helen Jiru from World Harvest Ministries Church in Kawangware. If uh, she shall join us today, we shall also have her on set. But make sure that you can be part of this conversation. The hashtag is uh, Power Talk Show on Twitter at Ram Aguko at Y254 Channel. Make sure that you head over to Facebook and tell us what do you think. How can we build love and trust in marriage? Fundamental question. Remember, the cornerstone of all marriages is love and trust. And uh, the question is, what are the reasons for the increase in the number of, uh, in the cases of divorces in the country? How do we build love and trust in marriage? Pastor Shadrach. Yes, sir. Tell me, love mm -hmm. and trust. Yes. How important are they in a marriage setting? Yes, just like you already mentioned, mm -hmm. there are quite uh, very key pillars to any successful marriage. And one that uh, lacks either of the two, or maybe for uh, more others that you've not mentioned, but majorly the two, mm -hmm. you'll find they really struggle quite a lot. Because uh, uh, from the very beginning, you have to understand uh, what is trust and what is love. Mm -hmm. And then you have to know uh, the source of trust and the source of love. love. Yeah, because I believe many people, uh, when they get together, maybe they go because they just looked at each other and loved each other, mm. but they really didn't do the needful for them to be able to build that trust mm. and also to develop love. Both okay. of them. Y y yeah. You're saying it's possible for you to marry somebody mm -hmm. in the assumption that yes we love each other but the trust is not there the fundamental issue of trust very possible very possible because there are other issues that can be uh, uh, can can be presenting themselves maybe you look at what they have mm -hmm. or maybe what they own mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily trusting them but because of the material things that you see <laughs> yes. Look at the money, <laughs> yes, money yes. aspect. Yes. We've had that discussion before on this show. <laughs> yes. uh, the love for money. Um, mm -hmm. So can can money be build or break these two things, love and trust? You know, uh, money is good. Money is good. In fact, uh, in the good book, Bible, uh, uh, it talks about money being very good, but the love of it. It's okay. always the root mm -hmm. cause of all evil, mm -hmm. the love of it. But mm -hmm. money is good, it's necessary. Mm -hmm. Therefore, money can either break or even build a trust in any marriage. It, it can make or break. Yes. Let me find out the, the side of making it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I, 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 I elaborate on that. How, how can, does it 
it, build. How does this is how it builds? Yeah. For example, um, if uh, I'm quoting somebody, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and I come as I am, okay, they find me with my twenty shillings, and then uh, from time to time I keep on building that money, you know, and they know also the source of the money where it has come from. I build it up to a level that is is, is uh, uh, to some point. Let me say some point. Mm -hmm. You know, this person will look at me and say, okay, uh, I've seen this person grow from zero to something. Mm -hmm. You know, it is building a kind of trust in that sense. Okay, okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, okay, I don't know if, 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 if that one can bring loopholes. Professor, okay. Yeah, yes. Um, yes. When someone is... Um, planning to get into the institution of marriage mm. and um, you're saying love and trust has to be there. Yes. Um, is there any pros procedure that someone needs to follow mm. when it comes to acquiring these two aspects, these two mm. virtues? Mm. Which one ought to, be f ought to come first? Is there love at first sight? <laughs> mm. Yeah, that's a very good question. Love at first sight. Mm. This one happens ordinarily to e everybody. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you know, in fact, you look at someone, then you, you love them from how they look like, okay? Yeah. Before you even begin to interrogate uh, the deeper part of their lives. And that's why now courtship comes in, mm. you know? Courtship mm. now is whereby now you begin to learn one another, you begin to know each other. And then you may, be, you may make a conclusion whether what you saw is really what you expect, you have now uh, achieved at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, um, <laughs> okay. Let let, let, let me digress mm -hmm. to yet another issue of trust. Yes, yes. Um, but from another perspective, yeah. well, love is, um, I mean, trust is often the first and the biggest casualty of uh, infidelity. Yes. When, when um, you look at trust mm -hmm. and, uh, okay, if, if your partner cheats on you, mm. how can you move on from that and mm. rebuild mm. the trust? Because from that point, trust mm. was broken. Mm. Yes, uh, you know, uh, when somebody has cheated on you, already the trust has been broken. Yes. And uh, trust is one thing that it's uh, too hard to build, but it's too easy to break. Mm -hmm. And when it's broken, sometimes to rebuild it, it becomes a big challenge. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it is incumbent upon uh, the two of you, if you agree and say now this mistake has taken place, but we need to move forward, mm -hmm then you need to, uh, to seek guidance, help, so that you know the reasons as to why it first happened that you cheated or somebody cheated on you. What was the reason? What were the underlying causes? You know? <laughs> the work of the devil. Yes, of course. The, the work of the devil from beginning to end. But then uh, you have allowed yourself to be an instrument of the devil, <laughs> of the devil to, to make that happen. So it is important to go back to the root cause. If you don't address the root cause, and you just you quote it, say, okay, now let's forgive each other, let's move on, and then things will just be better, you know, mm. you will find yourself going back to the same, same problem. W uh, can trust be rebuilt again? Yes, it can be rebuilt, but it, it, it may take too much time or longer than you expected. And the, uh, because there is always that fear. What if, what if, they do it again. What if they hurt me again? And, uh, and, and you know, that is the problem. How can you be able to be sure that they won't have, mm. you know, another affair? <laughs> you know, that, that is the question. Because now that is what yeah. can make someone to say, mm. you did this mm. a few years back. And, yeah. you, and you know, um, some, in, mm. in the case of a woman, mm. a woman will say, I remember back in the year mm. 20s, which, and they give the date, you did this, you did mm -hmm. that, and you did mm. that. Mm. Over this long period of time, mm. there was a an issue of trust in this relationship. Mm -hmm. So there is, how can you get that assurance mm -hmm. that we are safe? Yes, and that's why it begins now from the two of you. You know, you have to really make it a point upon yourself to change. Yeah, and, do, and you know, this change comes from within. This change is not from outside, like maybe uh, the things I'll say or do, mm. but should begin from the innermost part of you so, as so, a man. So who should change? The person who cheated? Or the, the person who was cheated on? I mean, uh, actually, it's very important for both of you to have a change of attitude. Because if you were cheated on, you say, okay, me have no problem. Uh, it is not me who did it. Remember, man is not an island. You never know. 
uh, the, the things can go the other way around and you find yourself in the, in the same spot. Mm. So uh, in the good scriptures, it says that uh, help somebody who has fallen down to rise, rise up. up again. Okay? Mm. But you take care that you don't fall, fall while helping them to do what? Right. To rise. So both of you must be keen and be careful and say, this thing has visited us, our relationship. Let us guard it. Let us take care of each other. Let us hold each other accountable, you know, in mm. this relationship. Mm. For, yeah. for um, couples that have uh, mm. uh, been in marriage for not so long, yeah. for a short period of time, mm. when they go through hurdles, you know, they normally say that the first few um, seasons or mm -hmm. the first few weeks or months are mm -hmm. normally good mm -hmm. because up on the, <laughs> the, the motor eco. Yeah, yeah. But now when, when it comes to now the serious issues of marriage, mm. that's when things, when things hit bedrock. Mm. Um, trust is broken, mm. love is broken. Mm. Is it possible mm. for a young couple, mm. a very young couple, to be able to rebuild whatever the, that they have done mm. well in advance mm. and uh, still get to the level that our old mm -hmm. folks have, mm. uh, have reached? Because right now, mm -hmm. divorce cases are a lot amongst mm. the uh, you know, young couples as mm. compared to Alewa Kitambu. Mm -hmm. And you wonder why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's a quite alarming, the, the, the number of marriages that are breaking immediately after getting marriage mm. uh, or, or weddings. But again, as you've said, uh, the older folks uh, head away, they put themselves together. Mm. But I believe we still have a chance even in this generation. So for this uh, generation, they, yes. they can still build whatever they have. Yes, we still have a chance. The most important thing I believe should be we need to understand each other's background. You know, when you, when you get married to somebody, you're marrying them from a di maybe from a different background. And this is what I say, you must all bring your suitcases with you in the marriage. Mm. And then you begin to unpack together. Maybe there were habits that you, you used to have. Then you check on them and say, no, this one, let's put it aside. Mm. There were good things that you used to, to do. Say, okay, let's carry this one on in our marriage. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. So when you understand the background from which you have come from, and then you begin to build a relationship anew, okay? Not, not uh, uh, now saying now, the way I used to live my life, that's mm -hmm. how it shall be, mm -hmm. you know, as a man. Mm -hmm. Maybe you didn't care so much about... Uh, uh, eating at home, you know, mm. now you're married. Now you're married. <laughs> you must eat at home <laughs> you now. You must eat at home. You must begin to adjust and change. And, and, and this is a problem. You know, someone still bringing the bachelor life yes, yes. into marriage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's affecting the fundamental issues of, of uh, marriage. How then can you say that um, it is possible, if, if that is possible, mm. does it mean that someone is just not uh, ready for marriage and mm. that's why they are bringing their old life into this marriage mm. and that's why we we we, we, tell, we tell people most of the time go for pre-marital counseling it is very crucial these sessions may look like a, a waste of time mm. but the truth of the matter is they're quite helpful because like when you come for to me and I'm counseling you I'll ask you important questions I'll ask you what is the vision you have for your marriage mm. You know, you know, people think that a, a vision is only for a company, mm. an organization, mm -hmm. or maybe for something <laughs> like that, you know? Yeah. I'll ask them, what vision do you have for your family? Uh -huh. You understand? Yeah. If they say, oh, we'll have just good time, we'll have many children, I tell them, no, please, go back and first of all, write your vision, and then let's come and begin to talk. Because that's the foundation of that's, your marriage. Yes. Every marriage. Should that also be done in the middle or in the course of a marriage again to reevaluate your marriage and build up again very 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 important because even when if you got married without having a vision mm. it's not too late it's not too late to start it's not too late to say let me have a vision for my marriage i want to see myself in 20 years from now with this woman with this man how will my life be you know so for a couple that is having um, mm -hmm. a problem right now, mm -hmm. they, they are going through, you know, the, 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 the hills, the mountains, and the valleys. Yes. Um, you, you'd say that they need to sit together mm -hmm. and have a discussion afresh to reestablish themselves. The discussion should not be based on, on even, or, or like even reestablishing, mm. but now moving forward because they're already in. 
moving forward uh -huh. now victoriously. Uh -huh. Okay, and this now brings in the question of communication, good communication. Mm. You know, mm. and uh, where there is communication, mm. things will work. Mm -hmm. Where there is no communication, things will crumble. Communication is a problem. Communication has always been the key problem. Why many marriages end up in divorce? Lack of it. So, um, lo looking at the aspects of infidelity. Yeah. Uh, so, can you say was cheating the cause of? Uh, could it be the cause of a, mar uh, a marriage problem, a marital problem, mm. or could it be as a result of mm. other underlying factors? Uh, I think this one could, could best be answered by somebody who has been involved in this mm. directly. Mm. But uh, now, looking at it from you, other can, aspects... Can, yeah, can you conclude that, that, that for someone mm. to cheat, mm. there was a problem initially that mm. enabled them to mm. have the ability to, mm. you know, to cheat? Uh, you know, everything that happens, everything that happens, I will tell you, Ram, mm. it's a choice. It's a choice that somebody makes. Mm -hmm. You know, even for you to go and cheat on your spouse, it's a choice that you make. Mm. And I always say that even not making a choice is still a choice. Uh -huh. You understand? Mm -hmm. Because God has given us the free will, the free gift of making choices in life. You know, you can choose to love your wife, to love your husband, to be uh, respectful to, uh, to her, to mm -hmm. honor her, and to honor your marriage bed, you know, you can make a decision. And therefore, I could not say that uh, these people, they cheated just because they, uh, or they found themselves in that particular scenario. Mm -hmm. No, it began somewhere in their mind. They allowed a thought to be developed in their mind. And that thought led them into making certain decisions. Mm -hmm. That's why choice is all we have. Today we can choose to stay right, to stay, uh, uh, to, to maintain fidelity in our, in our marriage, you understand? Mm. To be, to be uh, loving to our spouses and all that. It's a choice we make today. It's a choice we make. Yes. And these choices that we have mm. made are, you know, have the ability to, to you know, either spearhead, take us forward mm. or, you know, still push, pu mm. push us back. Mm -hmm. yeah? So it's, it's about choice. Yeah. It's about choices, choice. they say they have consequences, the results. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, <It's> okay. <laughs> when, when, still on building, building this aspect of marriage and trust, one may feel as though, you know, family and friends could be, mm -hmm. you know, also a source of yes, uh, yes. comfort, mm -hmm. you know, emotional, mm -hmm. when you're going through emotional pain or, you know, you, you, you want to talk to people you love and yeah. trust. Uh -huh. So, um, yeah. 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 Is, is, is this also a solution? Family and friends confiding in them <laughs> when you have a problem of love and trust in your marriage? Uh, I would love to really not concur with that because mm. uh, even the people that you may want to confide in, they have their own issues and uh, they have their own problems. And sometimes those that you confide in, instead of them giving you a good shoulder to lean on, you know, instead they'll make matters worse. That's why I always think that when something has happened in a relationship, mm. the only people who can bring a solution mm. into that relationship is the two of you. See what's that? The two of you. <laughs> the husband pastor, and the wife. Pastor, <laughs> uh, help me understand. Yes, I want to... Uh, you are yes. a senior pastor. Yes, in yes, yes, yes. And I, I really want to, to get this straight. Yes. When, uh, when couples are going through mm. a marital problem, mm. who should they confide in? Themselves. You see, when you talk about confiding, it means now you are putting everything that you have on, okay, the, table. on the table. Mm. If you don't have the ability to admit before your spouse that this is what I've done, this is uh, what led me to do this, this is why I, I got this money from here. You know, if you, are, you don't have that ability to do it to your spouse, mm. then I doubt you'll be able to do it to somebody else. So the starting point you start from the two of you, and then you seek counsel. From now, maybe a counselor, a pastor, your parents. So at, at what point do you seek counsel from other people? Immediately, you have agreed, because agreement starts from now, let's be vulnerable. Let's now be open. So it means point. seeking, seeking um, a third party's mm -hmm. intervention mm. is being vulnerable to that third party. 
first of all, it's between yourselves. Mm -hmm. And when you, have, you, you now give your issues to another person, it means now you are completely bare before them. So now you're trusting your life, your issues with them, believing they'll help you get a solution. And but I'll tell you, the solution <laughs> comes from you as a person to make that decision, a choice. Who should this third party be? Who should be an intermediator, mm. uh, you know, uh, 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 when couples are having a fight? A counselor will be very good. Uh, and also, if you guys got uh, into, you have some, what you call, if you had a church wedding, mm. or maybe just uh, another wedding, but you had some friends who stood with you at that particular time, mm. you could talk to them. Come on. Like a best man? Best man or, or, or best couple. Mm. You see, you could talk to them, right? Mm. And, and, and also, put your issues openly before them. What I encourage people is, don't talk to everybody. Don't talk to everybody, maybe your aunt, your uncle, your, your everybody, tell them all your issues that are happening in marriage. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, some of them may not help you. Some of them may even uh, encourage you to, to move out and to move and to go <laughs> your own life. Yes. In-laws. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, at what point should you involve your in-laws in, -laws? <laughs> now, in your marriage? In your marriage. And do they have the ability to break the trust between the two of you? <laughs> now, yeah, you have said very well, in-laws. You need to add another one there. Uh. Outlaws. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Pastor? What do you mean? <laughs> We have in-laws and outlaws. Uh -huh. The outlaws now, those are your friends. Your, your, the friends that you, you hang out with, the people uh -huh. that, the ladies that you meet in the salon, the chama uh, ladies, you uh -huh. know, uh -huh. the uh -huh. gentlemen that you go and watch football together, you know, the people that uh, you go together in, 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 in safaris, you know, mm. those are the outlaws. And then you have the in-laws, people are actually related based on your marriage so, to each other. So, 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 <laughs> uh, so, so someone like uh, my best friend, uh -huh ought not to be involved in my marital issues? I suggest, I suggest it be done very cautiously. Uh -huh. Yeah, very, very cautiously. Yeah, because mm. if it's not done cautiously, if, mm. not, it's not, if it's not done cautiously, it is possible. It is possible that mm. they may not give the best advice that you really need. So that's why I said uh, uh, marriage issues, are, you know, this marriage issue, marriage was started by God. It's a union started by God. Mm. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> right? so when God was bringing man together, <coughs> he was all alone. So I think our best solution comes from God himself. Mother-in-law, Sasa. Papa, mother-in-law. Ni tapigo ma. Since you're going to mother-in-law. Mother-in-law, hapo kuna shida sasa. You know, your mother or father-in-law now coming into your marriage. But you will respond to that after this break. Be part of the conversation. How can you build love and trust in your marriage? The hashtag is Power Talk Show on Twitter at Ramaguko at Y254 channel. This is uh, the, the power, power Talk. Remember, we also asked our viewers to be able to send in their thoughts in regards to this, all their opinions. Uh, record yourself and send us a, a one-minute clip and we shall play them right here on Y254. We shall do that after this break.